Round two. Fight. Hey guys, so we've got Tatachilla Lutheran College here on the red side, and we've got Renelleries College, uh, number one Yasuo OCE um, in the top lane, so um, in, in the blue team, sorry. Um, so up here, so we've got Kaisai, Maokai, Temkench, Fizz, and Skana for Renelleries College, and for Tatachilla, we've got Alawi, uh, Vane, Lux, Zareth, and Camille. So uh, very interesting team comps there. Um, so the one thing I've noticed is that what Renelleries College have done, which has been really good, they've got two carries here that really stand out, and then they've got a lot of protection around them. So that's a really fantastic thing to do. So you've got the ridiculous damage of Kyosite. We've got really, really good damage and engage from Fizz. So um, those are two things you've got to be looking out, because what they've then got is the engage and protection of the Maokai, the engage and protection from the Tam Kench, and the engage and protection from the Skana. So... Those are really, really fantastic things that they're doing there in terms of their comp. So not saying that um, Tatachilla Luthan College also doesn't have really good things. So they do have good CC from the Xerath and the Lux. So the one problem they're going to have here, though, is the fact that they have a really, really immobile team. So Vane, Lux, and Xerath, all really squishy all really really hard for him to get away from people so you can see that they have good engage and really really good damage i'm going to say that both teams have really really good damage probably a little bit on the um, side of tatachilla lutheran college um so there's that so they've got a lot more damage but in terms of around a team comp that's going to be using um, communication really well and things like that, which both teams should be using really good communication, um, Renelli's College, I feel, has the better rounded team comp in terms of tankiness um, and stuff like that. So um, you can see here that I'm having trouble sorting out the team. Um, so there you go. So they're basically on the right spots now. As well as um, you've got to consider as well, Lux is, I, I would say, I'd come out and say straight away that Lux is not a support. Okay, so um, you've got to think about the, all she's giving to, she's giving a little bit of CC and a tiny shield. So you've got to think about that. She's not going to give an amazing amount of poke. Her mana costs are too high. So unless she's going to, Camille's going to give her that blue, she's going to have a lot of trouble. So um, it's a very solo Q pick, uh, I'm going to say. So you need to make sure when you're in a competition like this, picking things that are really, really going to help your team. So, um, and as you can see here as well, so with the range difference in mid lane, so Xerath versus Fizz, it's a really interesting lane. So you know that for the first three or four levels, Xerath has the advantage. He's got the poke advantage. Um, he's also got a little bit of the damage advantage. As soon as you hit level three or four, it completely swaps over and Fizz can actually assassinate that Xerath. So that's one thing you need to think about there. Um, really, really good pick up top as well uh, with the Alawi. So with some, some of that hard engage stuff like a Fizz and a Maokai, to have that um, damage output and so, so as soon as Alawi ults you want to be as far away from her as possible um, and with the Renelli's College team they don't want to be really be doing that they want to be picking people and things like that so you can see here as well Skarna doing a really good clear so 12 farm to 8 doesn't seem like much but it is a really really good thing you can tell that he's farming really nicely getting his crystals happening and stuff like that so um, one thing that um, Camille's going to have to deal with as well, so she's going back early, she gets really low in her clears. So one thing you've got to think about as well, I mean, I understand that you can build a team comp around, say, a Camille, um, but the problem is these guys haven't. So you need something that's really going to protect her and things like that so she can engage and get her damage off, or if she's going to be a utility champ, she's going to be building tank, and then these guys are going to be lacking a little bit of that damage. So you can see here as well, taking advantage of that immobile um, Xerath, here and getting a really good pick on him um, and you see they're giving it to the Fizz and that's the way to go so you can see that the good communication there from the Tam Kench and the Skana they both could have taken that easily alright and that's a fact um, the really really good thing that they did was they left it for the Fizz who's going to carry um, so him and the Kai so they need all the kills um, so they can carry really nicely you can see here as well the farm difference of 20 to 12 now in the jungle um, Tazzy here is doing really really well so he's doing really well as his Skana um, and keeping that farm up nicely um, you can see as well bot lane um, I, say, I say it each week so after round one and with our scrims and stuff uh, Dylan here as Kai so he does a really really good job of farming um, so like I say as well you should be aiming for about 80 farm um, every 10 minutes and that leaves you to miss one farm every wave um, so no one not not even faker gets perfect cs he does pretty well but you know you've got to be thinking about that and you see here as well um 
Camille, so these things give vision, and you see here Camille going for a really, really risky invade here, getting some good wards in though, good um, offensive wards, so one nice deep one here, um, probably should have put it on his blue, but still not too bad, and you can see here as well, going up and getting this um, Alawi, so should be an easy kill for the Alawi here, oh, no, nah, flashes away, so that's flash down, um, but not too bad a job, um, see here as well, and... Scarn has gone down, so that was a, a pretty bad, a good pickup, sorry, by the Xerath. Um, a little bit of an over-engage, so as soon as they saw that Camille coming up and it was a 2v2, um, you've got to recognise that, right, Alawi's going to do more damage than a Maokai and a Skarna, and Camille's here as well, who was, who was also damaged, so that's something you need to think about as well. Um, so, yep, that's a bit of a bad trade up top there, going a little bit back and forth, one on one at the moment, a little bit of a gold lead to the blue side of Renella East College. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to skip up to Dragon, and we'll see what actually causes that to be able to happen for the Renella East College. So we're still one on one, six minutes in, um, all farms pretty well even. Um, you can see though that Kaisa is a little bit ahead. Um, and you can see here they're rotating, so they pushed all the way up, did a nice job of pushing. Um, and then have come over to get this dragon. That's a good play to have, especially when it's an infernal dragon. So we really liked, we've been talking about recently at Renella East College, making sure we focus the objectives and focus on that macro play. And you can see here, getting that dragon nice and early, that's going to help them scale into this, um, into this game. So um, the bot lane wasn't far enough to move. They have all rotated pretty nicely at the moment. And you can see here, um, Tam Kench having to flash out. Um, but Fizz going for a bit of an engage on the... Yeah, and so now we get the counter engage here from Renella East College. Tam Kent's going a little bit too far forward though, and only being on a third health. So that was a little bit silly for him. You should just take your objectives and then leave and have that as a win and go back, reset. Um, so you need to make sure you think about it. So you can't fault them for going for that infernal dragon, but you've definitely got to say, all right, why did you hang around? So many people when they play League of Legends, they just do things. They don't think about it beforehand. So if they thought about that, I'm sure they'd be like thinking back, oh, why did we actually go back in? There was no point. We might have got a cheeky kill, but if we all overcommitted for it, they probably would have just about aced you. So, um, good damage there from the Xerath. Skarna coming in, giving some pressure and covering for him. So, that was really good. Um, so, what we're going to do now, there's a few more kills coming up here as well. Um, we're going to skip to those. So, everyone's reset and they're back in their lanes now. We're nine minutes in, one dragon taken by Renella East College. Um, so, we're at the point now where Fizz, level six, can 100% kill this Xerath. Um, and you can see there, misses the ult. But it doesn't matter because you've got that really good Skarner engage. And hopefully he's going to give that to the Fizz. Fantastic. So you can see here as well, um, Camille overextending for this kill though a little bit. So hopefully she should get um, punished for it as well by the Skarner and the Tam. Um, and the Maokai doing a really good rotation down as well. So that's how you. That's a really good thing there with the um, Fizz escape. So always got that playful trickster to um, get out of things like that. So that was a really good rotation as well from Maokai. Um, and that's really good. So that's how you get those those different kills um, when they overextend to try to save one of their teammates. Um, we've kind of reset here though, so it's slowing down a little bit. After that first dragon, we've got a couple more kills. Got to make sure we're keeping that um, vision control done as well. So you can see here we've got plenty of wards, so really good control wards. Um, down, but they're all defensive. So I'd like to be seeing the Renella East College people getting some wards. So over here in this bush. Um, and possibly sneaking one over onto blue. So you can just see where that Camille's going throughout the game. Because um, it, it seems really, really close. I mean, we're 3-2. Um, Lux, Xerath, both have kills. Um, so at least their kills are on their carries. So you've got to be careful of that. Air kills are also on our carry. So we've got Fizz that have kills. Um, Kaisa is really, really farming really nicely. So that's what you think. She's going for that perfect kind of ADCS in 10 minutes. And that's really good. Um, but now we're going to skip to the next dragon. We'll see what causes them to be able to have that as well. Um, so you can see here as well. So these guys are basing at a really poor time. So dragon is up. They've got two wards on it. And that's really good coverage from them. Um, but going back at a poor time. So when you know dragon's up, you've got to really prioritize pushing this lane all the way to tower. They left it in a really poor spot. Um, so that allows Tam Kench to move up, Fizz to move down, and take that dragon. Lux has hung around for some reason, so I don't, I'm not sure why she's not getting anything out. She's not getting any XP where she's standing or things like that. Um, Xerath coming out with the ult there. Um, not a bad ult, getting some damage down. Camille st trying to steal the blue. Um, we've got a little bit of a, was a wet noodle contest up here with these guys just slapping each other for a bit, farming up, waiting for that team fight stage, which is all good. So um, that's what you want. 
Um, you can see here as well. So these guys are getting some good rotation happening. Um, no towers taken yet though. So you gotta think, 14 minutes into a game, we're having some really good rotations. Ronello's College have two dragons. They have been thinking of the four man bot lane or four man top lane to get an early tower and then rotate onto a different objective. So we have been trying to talk about that and practice getting that done. Um, so at any time during this game, uh, Maokai or any of these guys could be looking for a TP bot or moving top, um, taking tower and then rotating to Rift Herald or to Dragon. And that's something that we really, really need to work on. So we have been getting good dragons, but we haven't been getting any towers or any real hard objectives out of this. And that's what you need to focus on. I mean, Infernal Dragon was really good, um, but we've also got an Ocean Dragon on there that we could have got after we got a tower, which is a lot more important. So um, need to focus on that. What we're going to do is we're going to move up to first tower, and we'll see how that happens. So um, as you can see here, kind of everyone's kind of reset. Everyone's gone back. Everyone's spent their money. Um, we're 15 minutes and 43 seconds into the game. Camille, again doing some really risky stuff during this game, going all the way down into the um, enemy jungle um, where you can get caught. So there's lots of hard CC for Ronella East College in the Maokai, Tam, um, and Skana. So you've got to be really careful of that and you've got to make sure you punish her for it. Keeping some of these wards back that the Ronella East College have been doing really well. So this ward here, um, there was another ward in here. Um, you can see her there, make sure you converge on that. Make sure you rotate, converge on that and make her pay for that one. So you can see here as well, Fizz coming down really nicely. This is kind of another thing that, I mean, Lux is a mobile. She had no way of dodging that off. She just had to walk away and try to dodge it normally. Um, whereas if she had kind of a tumble like Vayne or any way to actually avoid it, or is it a bit tankier? So we've got our Tam Kanchins, we've got our Nautiluses that are really good supports. You need to focus on that. So uh, Zerath, not not being bad at um, pulling out that ult, so, which is really good. You've got to think about... Uh, if I use that at the end of a fight, I'm not getting all my damage down. Whereas if I use it at the start, I do get all my damage down and it's all really effective on the team. So you see here as well, Skana going for a play, um, picking the vein with that ult. Um, and vein being really low, um, Zerath being rather weak. So him being 1 and 3, 100 CS um, is getting really low. Um, and you can see here, these guys are all hanging around bot. Um, Camille pushing out mid. So you've got to think about that. And that was a pretty good rotation there. So with Maokai coming down and Skana going up, I mean, they didn't have damage to probably be able to escape, but it's a good thought that they are rotating on that um, there. So see here as well. So first tower has gone down already um, for their bot lane. And you see that hard objective compared to um, getting a dragon. So you've got to focus on that. And we've got another dragon coming up here as well for the blue side for another East College. Um, and then moving in to the Baron. So we'll have a look at that, and that seems to be coming out. So we're 5-2 at the moment. So Renato's College not bleeding kills, which is nice. Really punishing this Zerath for his immobile Zerath pick, giving the kill there as well, being really good team play by um, both Tam Kench and um, Skana. All right, really good, really good team play, giving that to the Kaisa and getting her even further ahead. So you can see here, 178 CS in 20 minutes. That's really... That's really good. That's more than 80 CS every 10 minutes. So, really, really good job. Really well done. Um, finally getting their first tower down there as well. Um, you can see here as well, they've actually got... I'm not sure. No, they don't have vision of the Camille there. Um, but I was thinking, though, if they had the vision of the Camille there going back, that's a perfect time to do Baron. But you can see here, they're going to move over, do Dragon, get another easy Dragon, because, um, I mean, Camille's gone back. She's got no chance. Got nice safe wards up here as well. Probably have another ward over here, so you always want to have double wards so you can see where they're coming from and you can get your rotation happening. Um, so now what they're thinking is now, so you can see here, all right, Alau is up the front where she should be, Skana's up the front where he should be, Fizz is going back for some reason, so got to be careful of that. So now they're going to hard engage, so Maokai doing the right thing, being the tank, taking it for a team. Tam Kent shouldn't be walking up that far though, that's where he could have got picked as well. Um, and you're kind of walking in one at a time. So now Camp, Tam Kench, that's it. Doing the right thing, staying nice and close to his tower and making him take those tower hits. But this will stem back from both their carries leaving. So Kaisal went bot to farm, um, Fizz went back to buy. So you've got to make sure you're careful of that. So really watching, it's not their fault actually, because they, they were at the time, they just took tower, they should be resetting. Um, but you need to make sure you're watching where your carries are. So yeah, there we go. Also, Skarnish should probably be giving blue to Fizz at this time of the game. So we're 20 minutes in. He's needing blue to um, keep his mana up. So, there you go. Then, oh, hitting a nice ult there by the Fizz. Um, you can see there as well, the, the, the Lux isn't offering much to that uh, vein. So, he was able to just jump straight on her, and there was not much that she could actually do. So, we've got both the carries here, just showing how much damage they actually do. 
Um, and even Tam coming in. So you can see there, and Camille doing something really funny here, going down bot lane to farm. Um, maybe she's a little bit disheartened because she's only 1, 1, and 3. I don't know, but she definitely shouldn't be bottom at this time of the game. So I remember telling these guys, I remember mean, being like, all right, hang on, why are we, why are we mid, why are we everywhere? We should be on Baron right now because Camille's left you wide open. You should be shooting the Baron um, and taking that as soon as possible. So you see here Skana clearing out this Scuttle Crab, um, and then they're all going to rotate after getting this tower. So it's good to get this tower first, get the minions up, and they've got to go past the minions first. Lots of people don't think about it, but they're just going to automatically they're going to attack these minions and take them, um, which doesn't really make sense because they should be thinking, oh, we have zero vision on this Baron. We should be walking down there getting vision on it. Um, I think Camille's just twigged that, oh, I should be... Oh, no, she's just going to farm. I thought she was twigging that, oh, I should be making my way over there now, but no, she's staying back over here and farming. These guys are doing a good job. They're coming over here and having a look. Um, Zareth as well, getting his ult out, which is good. He's going to wait. So the, the good thing he's done, he hasn't just helped him leash it. He's waited until trying to get his last hit lined up. Um, but obviously, one of his hits isn't going to be more than um, smite. So Skarn doing a good smite there. And that's one thing. If, if their jungle wasn't bot, they never would have gone for that play. And I think that's a really important thing to point out because you really need to make sure you're thinking about that when you're playing jungle. Where should I be in relation to our objectives is super important. So that was a really good rotation. And getting getting tower and then an objective is a really good way to go, especially when League of Legends in terms of getting your macro down is really good. Um, so now we're going to skip to as well. So there's another kind of grouping up, getting into team fight stage here at 25 minutes. So you can see here that Ronello's College, so we've got bot lane pushing bot, trying to get that tower finally. Um, we've got the other guys grouping up mid, so Skana and Fizz grouping up mid. Um, Maokai's also making his way down mid. So probably realising that there's no point in Maokai sitting top, farming away when he's a utility champion. So he should be coming down mid, grouping up with the other guys, um, trying to protect that Fizz um, and getting that... Um, push happening kind of thing. So now we're all doing a really good rotation bot. So we've got the two squishies down here bot, putting out a lot of damage. Um, Fizz doing a really good ult there onto the Zerath and popping him straight away. So getting one-shotted. And so now we've got four people bot lane and we can do that big push bot. Dragon coming up soon. It is an ocean, so it's not heaps important. Probably wouldn't be looking to, that until, to do that until after you get at least an inhibitor. Um, but so we're pushing up here. Um, so it depends how well Tadachilla, Lutheran College actually cover their... Um, bases here. So, yep, so pushing up, getting that tower, that's really good. Lux is kind of in no man's land, so yeah, you got to walk up and around. So like I've said on previous videos, you've got to make sure you're the other side of the tower, so you're further than um, splash range out of it, so you're going to take an extra couple of tower hits. Um, and that's good. And that was even a good TP to cover from Maokai there, because they could have thought about engaging on it with the Alawi up front, but did a good job of covering for them there. And now they can all move down and get that dragon. And that's really good. Um, as you can see here on the time sense, there is going to be a big fight after the dragon. So what I can imagine happens though, so we'll see it play out, but you should be taking this dragon. Good smite again by the Skarno. That's really good. Getting some good damage down by the Xerath there as well. So you see here, Fizz up right at the front. Um, has the Knight's Veil from... Um, Tam Kench on him, which is good because he's going to be the one engaging Kaisai by all intents and purposes should be sitting back um, Good slow there for, on the Lux and as you can see that's the that's the Lux, Lux pick, pick in a nutshell there Like really getting caught out um, Good damage there um, onto the Tam Kench getting a pick there with allow his E um, But you can see that's that's kind of Lux support in a nutshell. No movement. No nothing like that You can see here as well. So in this confined space, the worst thing you could do is fight and allow because she's going to get her ult off now. And as you see, her damage is just absolutely crazy. Um, so she basically wins that fight herself, and Ma all Maokai can do is walk away. Um, it's still a 3-4-3, oh, 3-4-4, which isn't too bad, um, and then they actually get ace. So it's a little bit unfortunate. And that kind of st it does kind of stem back to them not going back after this dragon. Trying to stay around with maybe a little bit too much gold, um, not resetting and all grouping up. Two people going in over here first um, is where it all kind of goes wrong. So you need to make sure you're thinking about it. not overstaying after objectives, going back, using your gold, grouping up properly. Um, and then as soon as that allow the ults, that's when you just walk away and she can't do anything. There's nothing she can do at all when you, if you just walk away from her ulting um, and possibly engage on the vein who was over here. So you've got to realise they were split as well. So they had people coming around this way and they also had people coming around this way. So 
some things you need to think about. Uh, what we're going to skip to now is there's another Baron that gets taken. We'll have a look at the lead up to that. And this is the final team fight um, for this game. So we've got Costa down here farming. We've got these guys hanging around the Baron. So taking the Scuttle Crab, which is really good. Um, you want to make sure you do that. And that's just free, free vision and free ward coverage kind of there. Kind of thing there. Um, hanging around the um, Cloud Dragon, which isn't terribly important. So, Kaisa, seeing that they're doing it there with her um, E. Is it an E? No, it's a W. E or W. Apparently, she's the new champion, so it's tough to remember. Um, see you there. And then, coming in here, so, Vayne's leashed that really nicely for Renato East College there. So, without their jungler being present, so, um, Camille being getting picked earlier, um, you can see that they could just come in and take that over. So, you can also see that They've drawn all the enemy team down the bot side, so now they're doing a really good um, rotation, really good communication here from Renato East College, um, and then moving up to take the Baron. So and there's not much they can do about that because Camille is... How do I see what level they are? I have no idea. So we click on Camille. Oh, she's 16. Um, oh, so they're both the same level. So she's 16, and so is Skarn is 16 as well. Um, with the Kai side damage, so melting that um, Baron, which is really good. And using a really good ult there as well by the uh, Maokai 2s. But you can see there as well, they did a really good idea. I think I told them that after that first fight. I said, what are you doing? Why are you trying to fight in an ultimate? Um, and so there, as soon as Alawi ulted near that Baron, they just left. They thought, no, nah, we're not having any of that. Um, really big overextension there by the Camille trying to get a pick. Um, almost works out on the Fizz, but Alawi also overextending there as well and getting picked. So... Got to make sure she's already used the ultimate, so she should be knowing that most of her damage is actually going to be negated now. And really good play there by the Kaisai. So 319 damage, um, CS, sorry, um, for the Kaisai going 7-2. She should be the main aim, not trying to get a Skana or a Tam Kench, who's just a utility champion. So you got to be really careful of that. Um, we've got Fizz teleporting bot, which is probably a good move, um, but still thinking about that in terms of they've only killed um, two people. There's still three people left. Could he three v one? Possibly, I mean, he is pretty fed at 8 and 2, um, but still not worth him going down um, and then being at a deficit 4v5. So, um, hopefully, taking that inhibitor and then the rest of them hopefully grouping to end the game. So, if we go back over here, so you can see here top lane. So, what they've done now is they've got two inhibitors. So, when you have two inhibitors, what you do is you go to the one that doesn't have inhibitors and you just wait. Don't be impatient. Don't overextend yourself. You just wait for the super minions to do your job. So you can see now on the bot lane, so you can see here bot, all pushing in. Same with mid, they're all pushing in. And that's just going to devastate their towers and their base. So if they stay over here and keep fighting for this last inhibitor, their base is going to get wrecked. And so you can see there, Alawi, the, the thing they do is they have four people that leave the tower and go over there. And that allows Skarner to flash on the vein, get her, get her with his, his ultimate, um, and now they're 4v5. So Alawi going for another ultimate there as well. So... Being really careful, Fizz missing all of that damage by getting a really good Zonyas in. Um, you can see the masses of damage there from the Alawi. So that'll stand back though from four people moving over here. Camille's still clearing these minions, but they maybe should have just sent Lux over because she's being the support but still doing a lot of damage. So you can see the Lux's support build has a Luden's Echo in it. So it has Luden Echo, she's gone Sorcerer's Shoes, she's then going into a um, Zonyas. So it's not really a support build, so that's really let them down there as well. They didn't really have that tanky front line um, that had good CC as the and Also got to point out, at 38 min um, 39 minutes, sorry, 380 farm from the Kaisai, which is really, really good to see. So as well as going 8 and 2 and 11, 38 farm. So she's, well, I think she's full She's full build, um, and that's really, really fantastic. You can see a really good job by the Tam Kench and the Fizz. Um, for keeping their ward score so high, so vision score so high, sorry. Um, and you see the only people that actually got a nice high vision score like that keeping them was actually the Alawi. So props to her, she had a really good game. She dished out some really, really good damage and also kept up that ward score really nicely. But you can really see the difference there. A team that has really good communication, um, pretty good ward coverage, not amazing ward coverage, um, but focusing objectives and macro play really, really allowed Renella East College to come away with a victory on that one. So hopefully this week we'll keep up with the same kind of um, format, um, but making sure we don't overstay as much. So when we take an objective, we think, oh, has this objective, like taking a tower can lead into Rift Herald or Dragon, um, but have we taken an objective now? Do we need to go back or does it lead into something else? So that's what we need to focus on and keep up that really good work. So. Hopefully this helps and we get another win this week.